Jack here at bakewithjack.co.uk and this is Red SOS episode 2. Roll that theme tune. Hello to you and welcome back to the Bake With Jack YouTube channel where it's quite late and everyone's in bed and that's why I'm filming now in a hushed Tone. Now following on from episode one of Bread SOS the other day, I thought it might be a nice idea for me to bake a few, like a variety of breads using the flours that I've got kicking around in the hope that it might help you uh, to bake some breads with the flours that you've got kicking around. We're going to discuss the characteristics of the final bread and should help us discover together the characteristics of the flour in the first place and with that understanding it will then hopefully allow you to make the best of your flour situation at home. Cut to the table. And here we are at the table. It's a bit of a mess, I appreciate that. Let me just check this blue tag isn't in shot. There we go, that's fine. And here are my hands. And what we're gonna to do today is something a little bit different. I'm gonna just move my hands around a little bit like this and pretend like I'm talking to you. And actually, I'm adding the audio uh, later on in the editing process, which is why sometimes my hands do something that doesn't really make sense. You see what I mean? Like that, for example. Now, what the uh, the point is, I'm going to show you four different loaves of bread. Here, I'm just waiting. I don't know what I'm waiting for, but um, here we go. I'm going to show you four different loaves of bread there. There's one. This is our strong white bread flour yeasted loaf of bread. Our video number 130, your video tutorial. That's our control loaf. Okay, this next one is made out of plain flour. That's a little bit smaller than that one, as I'm signal signaling now there with my hands. It's a bit of a smaller one. The next one we have, let me find it, is a 100% wholemeal spelt flour loaf. And the fourth one, the most heaviest of them all, is rye flour. It has its place, but you can see the difference in size, look, see, of all those different loaves together we're going to cut each one and discuss why they are different what makes them different hopefully through that process you'll understand the characteristics of each flower and there they are don't they look just wonderful okay so i'm just i don't know what i'm doing now but let's just maybe we'll just cut to the next bit now so first up we have this strong white bread flour loaf of bread exactly the same recipe as you already know half a kilo of flour 320 grams of room temperature water, 15 grams of olive oil, 8 grams of salt, 12 grams of yeast. Uh, now this one's risen up nice and big because strong white bread flour is high in protein and therefore high in gluten. The more gluten, the more elastic the dough is and the stronger it becomes when you work it and so it's able to hold all that gas produced by the yeast, puff up nice and big. I'm going to take a couple of slices of this loaf uh, now any minute now I'm gonna cut the end off like this it's nice and crusty on the outside and nice and soft in the middle and it should be the loaf that you will recognize as your standard white loaf of bread this will be the lightest of them all because it's strong white bread flour because it got well puffy that's the nature of the game you see nice soft texture inside there's the slice that's what it looks like it's puffy this one is bread for your sandwich or for your toast let's have a closer look at that there it is i wonder if i might just break a little bit up or maybe we'll skip this bit entirely cut it yeah here we go look break it open lovely job nice chewy yeah it's chewy because of that gluten let me try it let me taste it oh yeah now we're talking delicious white loaf of bread pop it there and i'll get the next one cut loaf number two is this plain white flour loaf of bread and what i did was i made sure that i stuck with the same recipe the exact same recipe half a kilo of flour 15 grams of olive oil 320 grams room temperature water, eight salt, 12 yeast, and the process was exactly the same. You can see already that it hasn't puffed up as much because it won't, right? 
plain flour is lower in gluten and so the final dough won't be as strong as that made with strong white bread flour and so it won't puff up as much um, it will become delicate at a sooner point in the puff meaning that you probably got to bake it a little bit early there are things that you can do with this like you could rest the dough in the fridge overnight to give it most chance of absorbing all that moisture developing all that gluten you can see inside it's not as light it's not as fluffy it's not as soft it's much more cakey and that's to be expected you can still make uh, a sandwich out of it you can still make toast out of it and what i'll demonstrate in a minute just breaking that open let me try this one as well yep that's exactly what i thought it would be like a little bit firmer uh, a little bit firmer it's nice but it's not as light as the other one it's still serviceable and what i would recommend if you're making this bread what i would recommend is that if you slice it a little bit thinner than normal like i'm about to here a little bit thinner it will make a nicer sandwich um, because it's a lot of bread to it if it's a thick slice it's quite firm and dense or more dense than normal it's a lot of bread to eat in one go so slice it thin and that'll make a nice sandwich nice thin bit of toast lovely the next loaf i have made to illustrate its properties is a 100 percent wholemeal spelt flour loaf now i used a similar very similar quantities but i upped the hydration slightly because it's wholemeal flour i took the hydration up from 320 grams of water to 365 grams of water but it's probably too a little bit too wet for the average home baker I, when i did it i thought okay that's probably a bit much so maybe settle at 345 or 350 grams of water and keep everything else the same as you can see it's much denser because it's wholemeal it naturally will be it's not going to puff up as much as a strong white bread flour bread but there's loads of flavor it's packing flavor it's quite close textured here and actually doing this exercise for you has helped me appreciate the different characteristics in breads that i don't normally bake like this this one is really lovely uh, it is wholemeal it's very very moist and it stayed moist for a while actually afterwards let me taste a bit oh yeah now you're talking it's really lovely packed with wholemeal flavor it come out really nice it's not going to puff up as big and fluffy as strong white bread flour it's just the nature of it um, but you can do it 100 percent like this or my recommendation if you've got some strong white bread flour is cut it with a little bit of this try 50 50 and it'd be wonderful but that's the spout flour loaf we've moved on already time to go so while i'm doing the switch over now it's probably a good time to talk to you about rye flour rye flour depending on who you speak to has little or no gluten at all uh, depending on who you speak to i'm a little bit unsure about who it, to listen to on that front but the point is that there's no strength and there's no structure within the dough there is no elasticity and so there's no kneading involved and there's no real shaping technique involved either let's take a look at the loaf here it is this will be the densest of them all the most heaviest the most brick like it did puff up probably uh, around a third on top of what it already was um, this one is really hard to slice let me just um, hold on a second let me, that was a little joke it's not that hard to slice but it is quite dense inside it has its place it's never going to be light so for this one i adjusted the recipe by upping the hydration i upped the water by a hundred grams that's 420 grams of water like i said earlier there's no kneading there's no structure building i just mixed up into thick paste and to give the flour as much opportunity as possible to soak up all the water i left it in a bowl overnight to ferment develop flavor and absorb uh, that moisture and you can see that i just showed you there it's quite close textured bread but it keeps the moisture really really well break it apart like that and let me try it let me try here it goes in it goes pop it in oh yeah now you're talking <laughs> uh, i actually really like this one i probably wouldn't make a sandwich with it and if i would do actually i'll slice it nice and thin like the other one breads like this are really nice for flavors such as the classic smoked salmon and cream cheese but it's really quite dense it's still delicious uh, and uh, once again through this process of making this and actually eating it over the last day or so uh, i really enjoy this bread it's a really nice one if you wanted to you could slice it thin press it between two baking sheets a bit of olive oil a bit of salt 
uh, and bake it through the oven and make nice, really nice rye crisp breads. Um, but hopefully that kind of helps you understand the properties of the rye flour you're going to use. What I'm going to do now is just line them up so you can see the difference. First one, that's the strong white bread flour one, the puffiest of them all. The second one is just coming. Let me find it. I've lost it. Hold on. There it is. It's the spout loaf. No, it's not. It's the plain flour loaf. The plain flour one is a little bit more dense than the other one, but still serviceable and acceptable. This one is the wholemeal spout. Heavier because it's wholemeal and because it's spout. And that's the nature of the game. And the final one being rye is the heaviest of them all. Now it seems like most of you out there are struggling to find the strong white bread flour and so if you are, if you have some of it, the best thing I would do is cut it with either one of the other three flours. Cut it 20%, 30%, 50% in, in some cases, probably not the rye, um, because it would affect the structure a bit too much, but cut it and see how you get on in order to preserve your strong white bread flour reserves. Um, but hopefully throughout this, looking at these loaves and me talking about it has helped you understand the properties of each. And so you can make your own call depending on what you've got. You might find out that rye flour bread, 100% wholemeal rye flour bread is actually delicious. I certainly found it out. I don't think I really took the time to appreciate that up until this point. I found it out and I'm eating it and it's really, really lovely. So there you go. I hope this video has helped you guys out. If you are having bread making problems at the moment, please send your woes to me at breadsos at bakewithjack.co.uk and I'll do my best to answer the most common problems in a video each week. It might even look like this one. It might not next time. Who knows? I'll see you next week. Bye bye. And there it is, Bread SOS episode two. I hope this video has helped you to understand the flowers that you might have kicking around in your cupboard, in your kitchen, in your pantry, wherever you are all over the world. Don't forget, if you'd like to get all my content in your inbox for free every single Thursday, you can do that. Sign up for your weekly home baking's bulletin in the link underneath, and it will be there every single Thursday morning. See you next week.